Welcome to this last Carolina Weather Group of November 2023. I'm James Briarton in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hope that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and so glad you are with us this week, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast app. Well, as you may know, earlier this month, the Carolina Weather Group joined forces with three other weather podcasts, Weather Brains, Stormfront Freaks, and Chaser Chat. And with your help, we helped raise over $7,500 for the American Red Cross. It was our Weather Pods Disaster Relief Telethon, and it was a great success success so much thanks in part to you our loyal viewers and listeners and all of the wonderful guests who joined us for that 12 hour long live streaming telethon well in this week's carolina weather group we want to bring you a portion of that telecast because we know not many of you got a chance to watch all 12 hours of it i know i certainly uh was enjoying most of it and want to bring you some of those highlights now it's one of our most popular episodes in our carolina weather group archive our conversation with the developers of the outbreak video game it's an upcoming game for PC that will allow you to chase tornadoes, chase severe weather with your friends virtually. You can add it to your wish list on Steam, and we were so happy to catch up with the developers of that game, Mark and David, during our telethon and wanted to bring you that conversation right now. Take a listen. Well, we had the pleasure of talking to these guys a little ways back on the Carolina Weather Group and so happy to be catching up again with David and Mark. They are the developers of the Outbreak game. It's going to allow you to virtually storm chase. So whether you're a real life storm chaser and you just can't get enough of it, or maybe real life storm chasing is just a tad bit too dangerous or expensive for you, this will allow you to safely do it from home on your PC. You guys have been working hard at development from the time you did the Kickstarter to doing some play testing. And now you are on Steam as something people can add to their wish list. So tell us, how has the development been going and what can people expect once this game hits the market? All right. So, well, first of all, thanks for having us. Um, in the past, I think, is it, uh, has it been a year since we've been on your, on your latest broadcast? I think broadcast? so. I think it's probably been about a year. Yeah, so a lot has been done since then. Uh, we're we're really getting closer and closer to the to at least announcing a release date. So uh, we're like in the doing all the finishing uh, touches in, in the game. We're putting the glue together. All the parts are coming uh, and forming this you know this one united thing, and uh, it's really really exciting for us to see it happen. So we're we're actually getting even closer to doing like major playtest sessions with a lot of players so uh it's something that's going to be announced really soon i don't know david if you want to point out something else i can add uh, rapidly like the development we've been doing lately is basically adding more content to the game uh last time we did a play test was really just uh uh to to test our main game loop check if our game is fun check if our players likes what we're doing if we're accurate to i guess uh, what people expect from such game uh and it was very positive so uh in the last stint of of work we've been uh working on adding more content so that the game has some replayability um adding more cars adding more customization options uh adding like more playable characters uh to get there we obviously were using a lot of uh kind of free assets from stores but we had to uh, uh, increase like uh, upgrade our, our assets to more game ready uh game ready stuff um we wanted to be sure to have like at least a female character that was playable so it's not like you know all the uh, mid-20s the uh, same white male in the in the game <laughs> like uh, <laughs> the same same model everywhere so we work with a pretty talented uh, team of 3d modelers to to have at least a couple of uh, playable characters i have a couple of uh, uh, customization cloths options stuff like that so we have different cards different play people around uh, obviously, it's a multiplayer game, so having some variety is very important. Uh, and like Mark said, right now, uh, like this part is going pretty well. We've been talking about it in our latest. Like we do a, a monthly development update uh, newsletter on on our Steam page, and we've been talking about the, the content we've been adding uh, in in this last uh, segment of development. And now we're gearing up to actually uh, trying to have more player playing the game by doing some play test uh hopefully longer sessions they in the last uh uh times we played uh i know you had the chance to play uh the game i did uh we were like very controlling of the of how it was going uh making sure that the player like just play one game stuff like that to, mm -hmm. to make sure that everybody was able to touch the game 
but uh, we want to test like longer session. Is the game still fun if you play like for multiple hours uh, yeah. and, and that kind of a thing? So uh, it's, we, uh, we also, if if I may, we also had a kind of a major breakthrough in uh, on the technical side where for weather nerds it might be a little bit more exciting. So. Okay. In in the past, what we had for storms is we use real life weather data from models, and we recreate the storms in three dimensions. But it was also, it was made of parts of three D models of parts of clouds, all put together like Lego blocks, you know. Uh, but now we've found a way to have like fully volumetric clouds uh, that that are made directly from the weather data. So it's it's pretty much like. Uh, you 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 get the model uh, doing all the calculations and outputting you some storms and then that's exactly what you're going to see in the game so it's going to be like even more realistic in terms of physics and stuff like that that's that's going to probably be one of the <clears throat> hardest parts i would imagine is trying to get all the physics and the behavior and the visual appearances because so much of storm chasing is visual right trying to look at those clouds and in interpret what's going to happen and i did have the chance to do one of those play tests it was very exciting and i will say one of the things that you guys have announced that I enjoyed was that you can report a funnel cloud and kind of help the virtual National Weather Service or other government authority that might be in this universe issue those warnings. And I thought that was a really cool prototype animation, if you will, of what happens in real life where these storm chasers see things and report it back and really helps the player become part of that, kicking off that cycle. Is that a good way to describe that? Yeah, we're we're actually encouraging players to report by giving them points if they're like the first one to report it. Uh, so not only you want to see stuff, so you you want to be in position to to have a good picture of things like that, but you also want to report it because uh, everything we do in our game gameplay design is around uh, not only fun or adrenaline, but also around like being responsible and. We're like doing everything we can to still have a fun game, but also make it so that uh, if you do something stupid, you're not going to have any rewards. So <laughs> kind of, you know, we, we don't want to encourage uh, bad behaviors because we've seen many in real life in storm chasing and we don't want this kind of game to, you know, encourage people to do dumb stuff. <laughs> Well, what I like about it, too, is it puts emphasis on the uh, emergency response and the storm chaser and the Skywarn spot mm -hmm. are part of the element of the storm chaser and not just the photography part. And I thought that was kind of a nice way to balance that. The hardest part in design is really to, uh, you know, make a game that was uh, honest for all the actual real life storm chaser and weather enthusiasts that they will recognize themselves uh, in, in the, the action they're doing in game. Uh, but also for like all the people that don't really know whether or not real life storm chaser and just general mainstream gamers that uh, start playing our game and are just like you know in a gaming sense chasing points trying to maximize like their return on every game, the people that are doing that would uh, uh, adapt safe behaviors and what a real life storm chaser would kind of make the decision the same way and by just engaging in the game loops will kind of learn kind of a, 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 a safe chasing behavior. And, and that line was very kind of hard to get. It took us a lot of iteration, doing play tests and, and looking at players, you know, playing the game uh, to make sure that like what we were encouraging was actually not reckless behaviors and not like trying to get as close as the tornado without dying. And that's not like what we wanted to do with our final project. We wanted to make sure that like, Obviously, storm chasing is it, it dangerous, and uh, we 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 wanted to be sure that to be uh, like on the on the right side of uh, of this uh, of this passion. So, question for you guys. So, I I mean, this is really fascinating. So, is, is there like a, a toolbox? Right? Is there like a, players can pick which tools they want to use to mo to monitor radar to see where things are going? Like, you have the NSSL tools. You have uh, radar scope you have uh, and, and maybe even other radar products but kind of talk about maybe some of the tools that the that the mm -hmm. storm chasers have to just get themselves in position to see a tornado sure so when you get into a game you have your whole map with a bunch of weather products that you can see so there is the basic products that are radar right now we have 
uh, reflectivity and velocity. And obviously in the future, we might add a bunch of other products for us weatherners to enjoy. Uh, and then you have the advanced products that are more like on the forecast or like short term forecast side or now casting. So you have like this is where you can see like the surface conditions. Uh, you can see the wind direction. You can see the winds at different levels. So you can see if there's wind shear or where where the wind shear is better. For example, you can see the the mixed layer cape. Uh, a bunch of I, I don't even remember all of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I was going to say, like, you know, I mean, we can get virtual soundings, but are soundings a part of this game too? Because those are those are like kind of what tell you where you know, what's going on up there. Yeah, right now we don't have like the, the the actual soundings with the hodographs, but since we're doing our weather with actual weather model data, mm -hmm. it's going to be very very simple for us to just have like a multiple locations on the map that you can just click and and get a an actual sounding that will fit exactly what you see and. You know, if you drive somewhere and the sounding says that the winds are uh, at the surface are from the southeast, that's what you're going to see in the game. So it's it's really accurate. Uh, that that's way. really cool. And this has potential to be like a multi-game player too in almost real time. It, it seems uh seems like that's something on the horizon. I mean, you guys are onto something really cool. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, let me ask you, David, as the developer on this. What's been the hardest thing that you managed to develop that gave you just like a huge sense of relief once you perfected it? Um, I think it's like it's a specific moment I have in mind where uh, we the first time we had, we we showcased our our first scenario in our like we did that like a trailer showcase or or whatever, and and we started from uh, obviously a real life scenario that happened. And um, without naming it, without like saying exactly which which scenario it was, or 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 referencing to what it might be, it was just to showcase the thing. In our YouTube comments, someone said like, "Is this like?" I think it was HB the scenario we we were doing, yeah. and someone says like, "Is this like HB 2020?" I think, <laughs> and and that was like the first time I kind of realized how closed or or weather was that someone with no prior prior knowledge was able to spot the scenario we took our, our weather data from. Um, this was like a big oh shit. Okay, we are we're we have something absolutely special that like to this degree that weather nerds can kind of yeah but just from virtualization of something that happened in real life. Uh, because I I'm not like in the weather um uh, uh, uh like science at all uh i'm a game developer through and through uh, i've been knowing mark for a very long very long time and i joined him to kind of it's it's his pet project he's been working in that for for longer than me um but uh i come just from the game dev side and and so at first i knew nothing about the weather and i was like hey this is this is cool obviously this is absurdly large scale this is incredible the immersion is crazy but to know that our data is recognizable to a scientific scale of that yeah. much was like a true kind of, okay, we have definitely something that's absolutely ridiculously interesting. Because if I compare this to all the weather in other video games, you know, it's always faked. It's always like, it looked pretty, but uh, I've been doing some research and just looking like at other games in fast uh, and time lapses. And it's why it's weird, like the, the, the fake weather kind of crumbles when you look at like it's if it's, it's if it's fake, it's going to cycle in a certain way that, you know, obviously it's not real data. But when it we look at you, our it kind of takes you out of the the fiction or the universe yeah, when there's kind yeah. of bad or hokey things around. But the fact that yeah. you guys have it so dynamic makes it immersive. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so that was like the, the one moment that really kind of made me realize that we have something absolutely unique uh, with a lot of potential. Uh, somebody who is not an artist and certainly not a developer, what I'm hearing you say would be my equivalent of I draw a picture and somebody recognizes it and I realize, oh, I must have done a good job here. Somebody recognized yeah. what it was I was trying to emulate. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, where can people stay in touch with you guys and how can they add this to their wish list? We're on Steam. Uh, if you just type outbreak, uh, you know there's not a lot of <laughs> there's another game that is written that way. I think our is uh, it was written on screen. Uh, it's it still is. Uh, so so just type outbreak on on Steam and and wishlist the game. It's the thing that helped us the most. 
uh, it helped us uh, break through the Steam algorithm and being showcased as like uh, upcoming games and stuff like that to get the game in the hands of as many people as possible. And uh, we are, all of our community is based mostly on Discord. Uh, so on our Discord server, we are always like, I'm, I'm chronically online. I'm always there and I'm always watching Discord. Uh, we have a specific channel for questions. Uh, where I answer every one of them uh, usually very rapidly. So people can ask questions about the game, ask questions about the development. Uh, we also have uh, like all of our de development is completely public. People can see uh, our, our Trello board where we plan everything that's coming up uh, and see when we're doing tasks and stuff like that. So, so everybody can know exactly where we're at. Obviously, making a game is very long. People are extreme, extremely excited, sometimes in passion, but I understand them. We're also uh, very, uh, very excited to get this game out. Uh, but uh, having this transparent development process kind of helps people, you know, understanding that making a game is very long and but it's coming. And, yeah. Confirm what you said. As somebody who found you guys on Kickstarter, backed it there, and now has added it to my Steam wish list, you guys have been very transparent every month if not more uh with the lady have either been waiting for or may actually get started through razor so we are very much looking forward to it and it's been a pleasure to catch up with you guys again and we'll keep an eye out for updates hell yeah thank you so much for having us david mark thank, thank you, you so much and shay to confirm what you said a minute ago when this game comes out i expect to play online with you and the rest of our podcast shay as we go virtually storm chasing i know right i mean that's yeah, i'm looking forward to it so May the best man win. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs>